finally, some new content. We've got some cards to review from the upcoming Voyage in the Sunken City expansion. We're starting with Kolak, a Druid Legendary. 7 mana 6 5 Beast with Colossal plus 1, immune while you control Kolak's shell. And Colossal plus X basically just means that you summon a specific uh, token, you summon X copies of them. So in this case, you summon one copy of Kolak's shell, which is a 0 8 with taunt, and Death Rattle gain 8 armor. So this seems like a pretty solid defensive card. The token on its own is somewhat comparable to uh, Moarg Forge Fiend. 8 health taunt that gives you 8 armor. It's pretty much exactly what the token does. That's very strong. And it also protects your Kolak. It collects immune so you can like trade with it. It means if you're getting AoE'd, then the Kolak is somewhat resistant to that. And at 7 mana, it's fairly cheap. We are losing overgrowth with the rotation. It's uh, Ashes of Outland. But I'm sure we'll get another ramp card, or like maybe even Overgrowth, or like Greedy Sprite or something is added to the core set. So I imagine Druid will still be able to ramp up to 7 pretty easily. Also notably, I think with Colossal, if you summon it with like, I don't know, a Witching Hour or something, then uh, I believe you do still get the, uh, you still get the token off of it. So if there's some type of effect like that, it could be really powerful. Next up, another Colossal minion, this one for Demon Hunter. 7 mana 3-6 with Colossal plus 4. At the start of your turn, increase the damage of Zillag's stalks by 1. So the stalks say, at the end of your turn, deal 1 damage to a random enemy. And because this is Colossal plus 4, you summon 4 stalks. So this is, what, 7 mana 7-14 that deals 4 damage at the end of the turn? It's a lot of stats spread across five bodies. But I don't know, I'm not too excited about this one, especially compared to the Druid one. I think by turn seven, dealing four random damage is just so unimpactful. And the way the stats are spread out, it's just so weak to AoE. Like, yeah, if your stocks live, then they do a lot more damage. And like, maybe it's hard to kill all four stocks. So if they kill like two, then you, uh, Still get to deal four random damage the next turn because those stocks get buffed. But I just don't think the card does enough on turn seven. I think the stats are just too low. I mean, again, if there's like some way to summon this card, I guess there are like the ways to cheat demons out of your deck. With uh, like carry a felsel, I assume works with this. So you'd get your stocks off that. Uh, probably not good with proving grounds. What's the other one? Uh, Sigil something. Sigil of Reckoning could be a way to use this card. I guess if you're playing a big demon deck, it's probably pretty reasonable. I'm not sure. I think we are losing some of the big demon stuff, so that probably doesn't bode well. But yeah, I think this card just probably doesn't do quite enough on turn 7. Not defensive enough like Kolak. Uh, next up we have Tuskar Trawler. 2 mana, 2, 3 pirate with battle cry Dredge. So the way Dredge works is you look at the bottom three cards of your deck, and then you choose one to put on top of your deck. So it's kind of like Discover. You discover one of the bottom three cards of your deck, but you don't add it to your hand, you put it on top. So my first impression of Dredge is that it's a very, very weak keyword, because... Like, in theory, all the cards in your deck are good, right? So it shouldn't it shouldn't be worth that much to pick what your next draw is going to be, especially when it's just a random choice of three. It's not like you're specifically targeting your win condition every time or something like that. So yeah, I have a pretty low opinion of Dredge. There are obviously some synergies with it, but I don't think it's enough to make a River Crocolisk see play. I think this card might just see play in Pirate Warrior, because it's a two-mana pirate. And, uh, do I not have the quest? Must have disenchanted it when it got nerfed. Uh, yeah, but it's pretty good with Raid the Docks just because it's a two-mana pirate. I don't really love it outside of that, but maybe there's, like, some super broken card that, uh, has synergy with Dredge. Next up, we have a potential Dredge synergy card for Mage. 
V as Sharon Sweeper. 3 mana, 3, 4 mech. Battle Cry. Put a Sunken Sweeper on the bottom of your deck. The Sunken Sweeper is a 3 mana, 3, 4 mech again. With Battle Cry, add 3 random mechs to your hand. So in theory, you play this, and then you dredge up the Sunken Sweeper, and then you get to play the Sunken Sweeper. And it's a 3 mana, 3, 4, add 3 random mechs to your hand. Um, I have a lot of problems with this card. The biggest problem of those is that the mech pool, at least right now, is just, like, not very good. And I assume some of the stuff is rotating. Like, Circus Amalgam we're losing, Claw Machine is probably the best mech, and we're losing that. And, like, who knows what's going on with the core set. So, yeah, like, currently mechs are just bad. Um, I don't know... If I would just play... I don't know if I would play Sunken Sweeper in my deck. Let alone as Sharin Sweeper. That makes me put work into drawing a Sunken Sweeper. Like, yeah, 3 mana, 3, 4, add 3 cards to your hand. But if all the cards suck, then it doesn't really help. And it doesn't really seem to fit with any... Mage archetype. I mean, of course they are printing new cards for new archetypes, but... I don't know, it just seems very unexciting. And then, like, even if the Sunken Sweeper effect is good... You probably have to play dredge cards to make it work. And dredge is just a pretty weak keyword. So, I don't know. I think this card is just kind of bad. Uh, next up, another dredge card for Warlock. 4 mana 4 for Murloc with Battlecry Dredge. And if it's a Murloc, change its cost to health instead of mana. So, if you're playing Murloc Warlock, which... As of right now, I don't know why you would do that, but if you are doing it, then you get to play a 4-mana four 4-4 four four that does something the following turn. So, when I'm playing Murlocs, I want my cards to be doing things this turn. Because if my board gets cleared, it doesn't matter what I do next turn, because I'm just going to die, because I'm a Murloc deck. And with this just being a 4-mana four 4-4, four four, which is like pretty weak up front, seems... Pretty unexciting. Um, I mean, in theory, your next turn can be really powerful. You could hit, like, a Mutanus. And then, uh, you know, you get to play a 7-drop for free, basically, because you probably don't really care that much about your health. Although at a certain point, even in Zoo, you do care about your health, because if you're playing, like, Flame Imp and stuff, it does add up. But generally, I think you're pretty happy to spend your health playing, like, a powerful Murloc the following turn. It's just, it's so bad up front. I just can't really imagine playing this. And I think Murloc Warlock currently is pretty far from being playable. Uh, I don't know if we've seen their Colossal minion yet. Maybe they're, maybe the Colossal uh, Warlock card is a Murloc. But even then, like, Dredge just picks from the bottom three. And if your Mutanus or your Colossal minion isn't bottom three... Oh yeah, we have seen the, uh, we have seen the Colossal minion, and it is a Murloc. But, uh, if it's not bottom three, then it doesn't really matter. And, like, if maybe there's some way to put it bottom three, but then that's, like, a whole other step you have to go through to do this. But, like, maybe if there's a two-mana Murloc, like a two-mana two-three Murloc, that says put the highest cost card in the deck at the bottom of the deck, and then you can curve that into the Blood Scent Vilefin, and then you can play turn five Gigafin, that could be powerful. But I think it's going to need to be something really specific like that for this card to be worth playing. Uh, next up we have the Bootstrap Sunkeneer. 5 mana 4-4 four, four Pirate for Rogue. With combo, put an enemy minion on the bottom of your opponent's deck. So uh, very similar to Vile Spine Slayer. But uh, instead of killing it, it puts it on the bottom of their deck. Which generally is probably a good thing, but now that we have all these dredge cards... Uh, the opponent's just going to be able to dredge up the thing you put on the bottom of their deck. But even in that case, you're still making them use their dredge card. It still deals with the problem for a turn. It avoids death rattles. Uh, you're probably... Well, I mean, you can kind of play this card in, like, any archetype, really. But if you're playing it in a more aggressive deck, then it's just, like... They, they're not going to have time to dredge up the thing and then play it and then have it be impactful. So, yeah, I think this card is just very good. It's like Vile Spine Slayer, probably better than Vile Spine Slayer. Uh, it's also got Pirate Synergy for what that's worth. 
And I think even if I'm like seriously underestimating Dredge, I think this card is probably just still good, even if sometimes they quote counter it with Dredge. Next we have Ambassador Phelan, neutral legendary, four mana, four, five. Battle cry, put three colossal minions on the bottom of your deck. So, like, this is a card that would work really well with dredge, right? You play this, put a bunch of strong stuff on the bottom of your deck, and then you can dredge it up. But you still have to play, like, this four mana four or five. You have to play the dredge cards. I think some of the colossal minions that we've seen already look a little bit mediocre. And it's just like, is this the best way to generate value? I mean, maybe it is, but there's pretty stiff competition with, like, Kazakasan, for instance. So, I don't know. It seems like a lot of work to get some value in your deck. It's kind of similar to Rustwick's, and that card was never really great. This card is probably a little harder to use than Rustwick's, although I'm not totally sure on that. I don't know. It's, like, a fine value card, but fine value cards have tended to not be very good in Hearthstone over the last four years or so. Sir Finley, Sea Guide, one mana, one three Murloc with Battle Cry, swap your hand with the bottom of your deck. So if you have four cards in hand, you put those four cards on the bottom and then add to your hand the four cards that were on the bottom of your deck. So obviously this is like kind of a dredge card. You combo it with uh, Ambassador Phelan, you get all your colossal minions and that's pretty powerful but you can still really only play like one of those Colossal Minions per turn, so it's not like super exciting. And if you're drawing into uh, the Sunken Sweeper, then like that's also not that exciting. So again, it's just like another Dredge card that's like, Dredge kind of sucks. But maybe if we just ignore the Dredge implications, maybe this card is just good. It's got Dire Mole stats, it's got a Murloc tag. So you probably just played in a Murloc deck, but maybe it's just generally good in aggressive decks. Um, if you happen to get a hand that's full of, like, buff cards or situational cards or whatever, you just play Sir Finley Sea Guide and get a reroll. Try to find some more tempo-oriented stuff you can just play. It does kind of remind me of Safety Inspector, though. And the problem with Safety Inspector is just, like, it doesn't really net you anything. And sometimes you want to be able to play it, but the card you're getting rid of is kind of good. And Sir Finley Sea Guide could certainly fall into that trap as well. But I definitely think Finley is better than Safety Inspector. It's just a much more impactful effect. Maybe just a good aggro card. But still, it doesn't generate resources, so... I'm a bit iffy on it. Next we have Spell Coiler for Mage. This is going to be the first of the new Naga-type minions that we'll see. Uh, two mana, two, three with battle cry. If you've cast a spell while holding this, discover a spell. Uh, seems pretty solid. I mean, discovering a spell is a pretty powerful effect. We've seen that on plenty of cards over the years, and they've seen play. Things like Pandar and Importer even have seen play. But uh, this card is a bit weird. Like, generally, cards like this, like, it's pretty good to play Pandar and Importer on turn two. Or you play Venomous Scorpid on turn three. But you need to have cast a spell before you do that to be able to play this. And especially on turn two, that's like kind of hard to do. I mean, certainly there are mage spells you can play on turn one. Like your opponent goes flame imp, you go first flame, and then you can spell coiler on turn two. Uh, we're losing primordial studies. Wildfire is a good one. The wildfire archetype is going to remain going forward. I guess it's pretty good with quest line maybe. But in general, I think it might be a little bit difficult to activate this on turn two. Which uh, is maybe like sort of a similar criticism to Wand Thief, which obviously ended up being a very good card. But I think Wand Thief is being one less mana, and even the combo condition on it is a lot easier to activate. Two mana, honestly, as silly as it sounds to say, two mana is a bit clunky when you're not playing it exactly on turn two. And also, with these Naga effects where you need to have done something while it's in your hand, it's a bad top deck. So, like, if you draw this on turn six, you better hope you have a spell you can play that turn, or else it's just a River Crocolisk. So, I think there are definitely some serious downsides to this card. But it is still two mana, two, three, discover a spell, so certainly wouldn't be surprised if it ends up seeing some play. 
Uh, next up, another Naga card. This one for Priest. It's called Serpent Wig. One mana, give a minion plus one plus one. If you played a Naga while holding this, add a Serpent Wig to your hand. So the idea with this card is you play a Naga. That enables your Serpent Wig, which you play, which enables another Naga, which enables your Serpent Wig, and then they just go back and forth, and it's just continuously fueling the chain. But... This card on its own is one mana, plus one, plus one. It's, like, pretty weak. And I don't think there's any way to abuse it. Like, we're losing, uh, Nazmani Bloodweaver. We don't have, like, a Radiant Elemental. If we end up with some kind of card like that, then, like, maybe the Serpent Wig can be really insane. But as it is, I think it's just not that impactful. And, uh, I don't know. Hopefully there are better ways to enable your Nagas. Not a big fan of the Serpent Wig. Uh, next we have Blademaster Okani. This one is actually available to be played right now. I think. Isn't it? Yeah, there it is. Um, Battlecry, or it's a neutral legendary 4 mana 2-6 with Battlecry. Secretly choose to counter the next minion or spell your opponent plays while this is alive. So, I mean, this is a pretty cool effect. It's counter spell on a body, but sometimes you can counter a minion instead, and there's some mind games, like maybe your opponent wants to play a spell, so you just counter the spell, or they want to play a spell, so you make them think that they're going to counter a spell, and then they play a minion instead, and you counter that, and it really messes up their turn. That's all great. Pretty cool. Definitely a powerful effect in the right circumstances. But it is also just a 4-mana 2-6. Um, if they kill it, you just never get the counter effect. Uh, the counter effect is pretty weak if they play like a one mana minion or a one mana spell. So, I don't know, I think it's kind of sketchy. Obviously if it hits it's really good, but I feel like it's pretty easy to play around. There are mind games, but I think it's probably going to be pretty predictable. And uh, you can't really play it from behind or it just dies. In that case it's just a four mana 2-6 taunt, which is not a good card at all. So, I don't know, I think the card's fine, but maybe a bit more, uh, has a bit more counterplay than is obvious, potentially. Uh, next up we have Kotori Lightblade, Paladin Legendary. Uh, 2 minute 2 3, after you cast a holy spell on this, cast it again on another friendly minion. Uh, certainly a powerful effect, and we have River Croc stats, so it doesn't need too much help. But the problem is there's just not really much synergy for it right now. Uh, Hand of a Doll and the Librum spells are rotating. And those are like the big ones you would want to use with it. Blessing of Authority is also rotating. So I think at the moment we're pretty much just looking at Hold the Bridge and Blessing of Kings. And certainly if you landed this with either one of those that would be powerful. But... You do have to have this in play, you have to have another minion in play, and you have to have the holy spell that's worth casting. So it's definitely pretty situational. Uh, there is a new holy spell, the Garden's Grace, which can be zero mana, gives something plus five, plus five, and Divine Shield. And obviously if you can play that consistently with Kotori Lightblade, it'll be powerful. But I think that card also suffers from a small pool of holy spells. And still, you have to have the two minions in play. You have to have that card. So it's, like, kind of weird. But it's definitely a powerful effect when it does hit. I think we probably need to see one or two more good holy spells. And if we do, it could be very good. We also need to see a paladin deck this would fit in. I have no clue what paladin looks like going forward. They've pretty much been the Librem class for the last, like, two years. So, uh... Yeah, I just don't really know what they're doing. Maybe some hand buff stuff. And hand buff, this card is probably not great. I don't know. We'll have to see where Paladin goes. This card is definitely up in the air. Um, another Paladin card. Shimmering Sunfish. 3 mana 2, 5 beast. With Battle Cry, if you're holding a holy spell, gain Taunt and Divine Shield. So, uh, I mean, certainly 3 mana 2, 5 Taunt Divine Shield is a powerful minion. It's a lot of health, the Divine Shield is just an extra layer of defense on it, and they kind of have to deal with it because it has Taunt. So that's a lot of stats. 
Um, I did say before that the Holy Spell pool is a bit lacking, but this doesn't care if Holy Spells can target. So you can play something like Avenge or Blessed Goods, some of the other secrets. I believe we still have Conviction. So yeah, this card has a lot more room to uh, be supported compared to the other card that cared about Holy Spells. And uh, if you're just slamming it on turn three, very good defensive option. I have to imagine if there's a Paladin deck that plays Holy Spells, you probably just play this card. It's a huge, huge stop to anything aggressive, basically. And it's a great target to land. Like, curve this into Blessing of Kings is a very good target for that. So yeah, Sunfish is probably solid, again, depending on what Paladin looks like going forward. And uh, that is the last card for today, but they have revealed, like, 50 cards so far. So hopefully I'll be back with another card review very soon.